What is going on everybody? Tomeister here. Welcome back to Bixton. It has been a hot minute, but here we are back in the city and we are going to be continuing to expand on the town of Les Deux Lacs where I'm going to be building a nice luxurious golf course over here in Ravenwood using nothing but vanilla tools. Okay, so in one of the most recent updates to the game, we now have access to plop some surfaces down. So we no longer need any mods to do this. And uh, using all of these uh, preset surfaces, I'm going to be building a golf course. So this episode is going to be a bit more on the aesthetic side than the average Bixton episode. But it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, it's going to be a, uh, a good showcase for you guys to see what is possible with uh, just a very basic set of mods. So I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to purchase these two tiles. I don't think they're going to be in the way of the golf course. I'm really thinking the golf course is only going to be contained to the these little lakes here. Um, because it is quite expensive to purchase these two tiles. Let's take a look at my economic situation. You know, I'm still raking in over a million dollars a month. Uh, but I mean all things considered it's Still gonna be quite expensive just for two extra tiles. I'm already paying dearly for all of the extra tiles that I purchased um, But you know what I think I'm gonna go ahead and purchase these tiles. I Don't think it's gonna hurt that much Yeah, I mean I'm still raking in over them. Uh, oh, oh geez what? Uh, okay, well the math is not mathing on this one guys. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm still making money. I still have a ton of money. You know what? I shouldn't even be worrying about it. So let's continue on. And uh, I'm going to uh, build out this road here up to the border of the map. So eventually, one day, um, all of these tiles are going to be bought up and this road will probably continue to uh, the actual edge of the map. So I just wanted to set that up to begin with. And now what I would like to do is start setting up the actual golf course. And it's not going to only be a plain old golf course. What I want to do is take a section of this course and build some houses within it. And I don't know, I, I think this is pretty common with uh, a lot of golf courses around the world. Um, but a lot of people actually live within golf courses. You know, you'd like you can purchase a home that is on the actual golf course. Uh, I'm not sure how the agreement works between the homeowners and the golf course. You have to pay like a yearly fee or something or maybe it's included in the purchase price of the home. I'm not really sure. But anyways, I am going to be building um, that type of neighborhood within this golf course as well. So I'm going to first start things off by laying down some road infrastructure because apart from the golf course, the town is going to expand over time and uh, you know, I just want to get my roads all set up to accommodate that expansion. There, so we'll start off with this and this road is just going to loop around just like so and the golf course will kind of loop its way around this. I'm not really sure on the scale. So I'm just going to wing it and we'll see how it turns out. So I want to make the golf course kind of loop around this entire lake and then in between all of the holes are going to be some rows of houses. So I'm going to start off with, uh, actually let's delete this. I'm going to scooch it over a bit more in this direction. Just want to make sure that I have plenty of room here. There. So let's start off with this. We'll have a nice windy road running through here and then I'll go ahead and preemptively plop down some housing. Okay, we'll start off with that. There we go. And then I think I'm going to 
add another street over here with a cul-de-sac because they are now zonable. I mean, it's been a little while, but it's still a pretty exciting new feature. And I am using the beachfront housing because I find that these houses look a bit more luxurious, I want to say, than the average house just in the, the basic default theme. So I'm going to go with that. And then I think I'm going to add some streets over here as well. cul-de-sac on both of these roads and I'm gonna switch it up a little bit let's add some European waterfront housing because these homes look even a bit more posh I would say than the American style oceanfront housing you know because they have that nice you know Latin American theme to them they look really nice there we go. And then, you know what, just for functionality sake, I'm going to plop a small park, I suppose, over here. And then I'll do a second one right over here. You know, just to provide those extra amenities for these neighborhoods. All right, so let's start off with that. And now let's get into our landscaping menu and then we will we'll, uh, I'm going to start to build out the actual golf course. But I just want to try something out here. We have two grass textures. I haven't really taken the time to look at these before starting this episode. So we have some plain grass and I think I'm going to pause the game here because it's being a little laggy in play mode while I'm doing this. And then we have, oh nice. Some beautifully manicured grass too. You have like these kind of stripes as if uh, they were mowed in a, a certain pattern. So then we have some sand surfaces as well. So then I'm gonna use this for my sand bunks or maybe this texture might be a bit better. Yeah, I definitely like that one more. And then uh, that should do it. I'm not really sure what these Textures will look like. Looks like we have some tiles. Uh, we have this texture. And what is this? Okay, yeah, these are all just tiles. Awesome. Well, let's get into it, guys. Let's start building ourselves our very first custom golf course on this entire map. I've built a couple of golf courses so far in uh, City Skylines 2, but uh, this is going to be my first attempt here in Bixton using the uh, the built-in tools. Um, okay, so one thing I have to do as well is I need to build the clubhouse for this golf course, and I think I'm going to build it over on Cherry Street over here. I don't want to build it along this main road. Um, on Linden Street because this is kind of like a main arterial road and I want to make sure that there's the least amount of uh, intersections as possible so uh, I'm gonna build it over here and you know what perhaps we can use do we have any residential signature buildings that we could use you know a nice uh, look at that golfers villa <laughs> that would actually be really fitting for this um, but unfortunately, we're quite a ways away from uh, from unlocking this. However, we only need 10,000 cells to unlock this. You know what? I'm, I'm compelled to switch all of this zone out for, uh, for the European variant. I think I'm going to do that. Because I want to get up to the 10,000 cells. I'm, I'm committed, guys. I want that clubhouse. And on top of this uh, this new zoning, I'm gonna build some EU style housing along the river, just to pump those tile numbers up. I don't think that'll bring us right up to 10,000 just with that, but uh, it sure will help. 
here. I'm going to accelerate the simulation. Just a reminder, guys, the reason why I'm always playing on uh, the number one game speed in Bixton is because it literally makes no difference whether or not I play on full speed or on the slowest speed. Um, my city is just at such a massive point now, it just completely kills the game speed. So uh, things are a bit slow going. You, you got to be patient <laughs> with the city this size. Um, because of that. So what I'll do then is I'm going to continue expanding some new neighborhoods over on this side of the lake. I don't think the golf course is going to make it all the way to this section. I think I'm just going to keep everything within this block, maybe spill on over to over here. So why don't we build some lakefront housing over here? That would look really, really nice. And keeping it in the European theme, let's start zoning this entire space. Now, I'm super determined to unlock that golf villa. So over the next little while in this episode, I'm just going to expand like crazy with this low density EU style waterfront housing so there's going to be a whole luxurious kind of posh neighborhood in ravenwood that's uh i guess the auto generated name of this district so uh, ravenwood's going to be a really really nice neighborhood full of these european style houses and i'm going to break away from the traditional grid pattern that a lot of the city has and go for this really abstract kind of weird road layout that is often found in american suburbs uh, but they're going to be a little bit more on the weird side, even uh, compared to a lot of suburbs. So a lot of randomness <laughs> is going to go on in these neighborhoods. But you know what? In the end, it leaves a lot of space between the houses, which can then be filled with trees. So then it kind of emphasizes that this is a posh neighborhood. All right, guys. Well, it's not the golfer's mansion, but we did unlock an extreme athlete's villa, which we can probably place somewhere in uh, this area. Um, so right now I'm expanding in this new neighborhood over here. And I think with this amount of zoning tiles, I should be able to unlock it. I'm just about uh, just over a quarter of the way through unlocking this. Hopefully my low density residential demand can sustain it, but uh, we'll just have to see here. So I'm just going to keep zoning away until we unlock this new building. Now, don't worry guys, I'm going to try to keep on top of things in this neighborhood as far as uh, public services go. So uh, I'm going to build some parks over here, provide schools, all that stuff. You know, I really want to keep on top of that and uh, make sure that we don't get into another big educational system mess. There, so even with all that, where, how far along are we? Oh my God, we're only a third of the way, not even. <laughs> and it looks like all of my demand is gone. Well. <laughs> So unbeknownst to me at that very moment, I thought that it was just the number of tiles that you place down. And it actually doesn't count until there's new buildings being constructed on those zones. So, uh, you know, with all of this new zoning that I'm building, it's actually a pretty small amount of time that it took for 10,000 blocks of residential zoning to appear. All right, here we go, finally, the golfer's villa. So 
I have an entire new neighborhood that's all built up here as a bonus. So that is really, really exciting. So now let's move on to the actual focus of this episode. Let's get our golfer's villa. Oh my God, this is way bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, I was going to plop it kind of like not directly onto this main road, but uh, I think I might have to unless I do uh, something like this. Let's delete this road and then we're going to do a little bit of a zigzag like this. All right, and then from this zigzag, we're gonna build a one-way road that's going to come up like this. And then make its way back onto this main road. And then that should set us up pretty much in the same spot. There we go, that is wonderful. So let's plop this bad boy and check this out. That is wonderful. Like you even have a little putting green or something around the golfer's villa. Awesome, guys. All right. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove some trees. So, uh, oh, hang on. Let's turn off snapping. Let's bring our brush strength up to 100%. And I'm just going to go all around this entire neighborhood and remove most of the trees. And this is just going to make it so much easier for when I make all of these golf holes. So I think that should do it. There we go. All right. So my goal for this golf course is I want to make it a full 18 hole golf course. All right. So I got to be, uh, I got to be careful here of, you know, where I build everything and, and how I set everything up. So let's start off over here near the actual clubhouse and we're going to build our very first hole. So I'm gonna start it off right against the main building here. Oh, is that not working? Okay, I guess I can't do it directly adjacent to this building. So I'll just start it off a bit off to the side and let's start things off kind of nice and short now again i'm really not sure on the scaling of this golf course i've looked at a number of golf courses just kind of on the fly here oh no am i gonna have to use anarchy it looks like I'm not even sure if this is going to work. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, guys, I'm not really sure on the scaling of this golf course. Because I've looked at a number of golf courses before starting this episode, and I'm going to build something that I think looks right. All right, so now let's build a whole bunch of sand traps. And, you know, I've never actually played golf myself, or that's a lie. I've played golf before with a bunch of friends, but, you know, I wasn't really into it very seriously. So I have no idea what is considered a difficult course versus an easy course versus a nice course or like a really playable course. I'm really, really not sure on that front, so enlighten me guys if you can all right so let's start off with this and then we're going to actually i'm going to go back to the very start here and i'm going to build a little tee off square just like this there and i'm going to do the same thing over here And then we'll build our green.
Or would this be the fairway? I think this would. Be, this is called the fairway. And then this is the putting green. Just a nice circle at the end here. And then I'll build a couple more sand banks. Just like that. And then how about a couple on the side? Just like this. <laughs> Now, partway through the construction of the golf course, I didn't realize this at first, um, but if I completely back out of my surfaces menu, the actual fairway does not appear. So only the rough appears. I didn't notice, but yeah, you can't actually plop those textures on top of another texture, which is really, really unfortunate. Now the sand bunkers actually work. Those you can plop them over anything else with anarchy, uh, but unfortunately for, you know, the, the actual fairway, um, it's not going to work. So that's kind of unfortunate. Um, here I am trying to do the opposite. I was thinking, oh, well, what if I place down my fairway before the rough? And unfortunately, it's just doing the same thing. So it's kind of a bummer. So in this case, we'll just assume that the rough is the default grass textures in the game and the fairway will be the manicured grass surfaces that I'm placing down manually. As for the putting greens, well, I mean, both of these grass textures are very similar, so I'll just make these little circles of that different grass texture on uh, the edge of each hole. But it's okay, we'll just carry on with, uh, you know, I guess some plain old green surfaces. And there you have it, guys, a complete 18 hole golf course. All of my holes are complete. For the most part now the only thing that is left to do is to detail in between all of these holes and uh, i'm going to start by connecting them all up with paths because of course you need paths to drive your um golf carts to uh to all of these holes now i'm really hoping that without any mods if i build a path right on top of some of these um these surfaces is not going to destroy everything. It looks like it's going to be just fine. So let's build a little path going out this way. I'm just going to connect everything up just like so. And then we'll have this path here running along the shoreline. And then I'll do a little cul-de-sac over here just like that so you'll be able to turn around and then keep on going in this direction just like this connecting up all of these holes together going to bring this across the street just have a simple crosswalk and then this path will kind of wiggle its way through this entire course over here and then we're gonna have to cross the street once again
Okay, now I think that's pretty well connected. We pretty much just have one main road squiggling through this entire golf course. Now I've added a couple more streets here and I'm gonna fill this in with some more nice residential. Actually, you know what? I don't really have to do the EU style anymore. I'm gonna use some North American style just to mix things up a bit. And uh, can I fit some homes in the middle here? You know what? I can probably do a second cul-de-sac coming into this spot over here. And I'll just have to be careful not to build my houses too big, but I think if I do like two by threes, should be fine. And then over here still, oh yeah, I can fit all kinds of houses in here. There we go, guys. And then I can squeeze in probably a couple here. There, yeah, that should do it. Now, what I wanna do here is I'm going to reclaim some land. We're gonna make the lake just slightly smaller. And the reason why I am doing this is because every golf course needs a driving range, right? So let's get a driving range built. Now, this is gonna be very simple. I'm just going to build a giant field, essentially. And there is your driving range. <laughs> now I'm probably gonna add a couple details on the very edge here, you know, just to have like a little bunkhouse or something to, uh, to make it a bit more realistic. But in essence, this is your driving range right by this road here, which is probably a bit hazardous, but uh, we're just gonna ignore that and, uh, and carry on. So now the next step is to kind of beautify this whole thing with some trees. And uh, I'm gonna place multiple trees. I'm just going to build them right up to full mature size. And I'm gonna reduce my brush size to, uh, I guess, maybe like 70. I'm gonna turn off anarchy so we don't have any trees plopping themselves all over, you know, the roads and such. And let's start laying down some trees. And I really like how we can kind of see where some of these trees are going to spawn. So then we can be careful not to plop uh, any trees on the actual course. So I'm gonna reduce my brush strength, I think to about 50% because I want to create still some variation on the types of trees that we plop through here. And it is spring, so the trees are still kind of just getting their leaves back slowly. But uh, this golf course is going to look all nice and green here shortly once we get into probably the month of May, I would guess. Yeah, and I think I'll really have to plop a lot of these trees manually once we get in between all of these holes. Yeah, look at that. So unfortunately, anarchy is not affected by these surfaces, but that's fine. I guess another thing, oh crap. Well, I did it there, guys. What I was about to say is what I could also do is just plop a whole bunch of trees everywhere and then use my bulldozing tool to, uh, oh, no, let's turn on anarchy, to, um, you know, get rid of the trees on the actual golf course. But uh, evidently, that is not going to work. So I'm just going to have to be a bit more careful so we've plopped down some alders. Now let's go through here in a single mode and just maybe plop a few of them manually throughout this whole area.
Now we're also going to place some evergreen trees just to mix it up a bit. Just so the golf course still looks pretty nice during the winter. And to finish things off, let's get some big old oak trees in here. These are like the plushiest trees in the game right now, and they look really, really nice when they're all green and fluffy. You know, if you're looking for something, for a type of tree to fill in an area, you can really, really get far with some big old oak trees. Okay guys, I think I'm pretty well satisfied with this. Look at this, this is awesome. Brand new golf course. I think I'm gonna add some more houses along this stretch of road though. There's plenty of room for some more luxurious housing along this main road. We'll get that all built up. And then maybe some more housing along the river as well. I'm surprised that Despite all of this new development, this is all low density residential. My demand is keeping up and this is wonderful. And we're just over 300,000 people in the city now, which is absolutely insane. Look how massive this entire map is now, guys. <laughs> this is wild. So uh, now to finish things off, let's just finish up with our driving range. I'm gonna delete a couple trees and I'm going to build a path that goes out to the driving range. All right, here's the deal, guys. When I started this episode, my intention was to create the most realistic golf course I possibly could without using any big game changing mods. I, I was really striving to only use the tools available in the base game, you know, such as surfaces and, you know, that kind of thing. But I find myself kind of in a pickle when trying to create something like a driving range where only using surfaces is just not gonna cut it. So I bit the bullet and I installed another mod. So I think I'm up to 13 mods now in this series and I installed the find it mod. Now, if you're not familiar with this mod, essentially you can search for any item in the game, any building, any prop, literally anything, and you can plop it in your city. So uh, I'm officially going to be using this mod to plop various props in this golf course to kind of spruce it up a bit more, you know. I think I got pretty far with just the default tools in the game, you know, from afar this looks like a really, really convincing golf course. But if we want to get down to the nitty gritty details, we need a bit more horsepower. And uh, I'm going to be using find it here to search for some props. So. Uh, Let's go in here to our props menu and, um, you know, I don't really have any concrete plans for this driving range, but perhaps we can build some, uh, some low fences between all of these, uh, launch pads or whatever they're called. <laughs> I'm not even sure. So yeah, I'll just build these little fences in between each one. There, so they all have their individual zones. And then uh, perhaps I can go here and search for shed. And this would be for, you know, the little shed where you would go pick up your rented clubs. There, and we can start off with that. So I don't really miss, I don't necessarily need to plop down a ton of props to create, you know, a convincing thing. Um, but I mean, this, this is quite obviously a driving range, um, even without all the props and things like that. But you know, I felt like this area was just looking a little more plain with, uh, with no props. So, you know, in addition to, uh, these little fences here, perhaps we can go around the perimeter of maybe not the entire golf course, but at least a, a good section of it. And we can uh, build... Let's see here, why am, why is there like ventilation under fences? 
That's kind of odd. I think I had better results by searching the word fence. Okay, yeah, so now I have all these European style fences. And I'm gonna go with the EU fence residential theme. And let's just take a look at how this looks. You know, it looks very luxurious and a bit more, uh, yeah, higher end, I would say. So what I'm gonna do now is enable anarchy. And I've actually installed another mod that I kind of forgot about, and that is the line tool. So essentially what this mod allows you to do is to line up any prop that you want. So rather than having to plop a bunch of something in a row, um, you can simply use the line tool to do that much more simply. So uh, there's actually a fence mode included in this mod, which allows you to just string along uh, a fence. But let's say you're plopping down, I don't know, light poles or something, and you only want them to be spaced out every so often. Well, you can do, uh, instead of fence mode, you can turn that off, and then you can actually set the spacing between your props. So, um, you know, you're able to, to just place various props at a particular distance and everything is just totally customizable it's a really really fantastic mod i use it a lot in my gasparilla series uh so let's go back into fence mode here and i'm simply going to run this fence alongside this main road here actually i might push it back a little bit into the trees here And then this mod is a bit weird to use, so when you're building a fence, you have to start from the halfway point. And then go from there. And I'm not 100% sure on how to keep the colors the same, so every time I'm plopping down these fences, the colors are a little different. Here, I think I'm just going to send this fence into this guy's backyard. There we go. And then I'm also going to build a fence over here. But yeah, let me know in the comments, guys, if there's any way to keep the colors of this fencing uniform. There, we'll start off with this, and then I'll make a little entrance like this. There, I think that should do it. A lot of the other areas, well, maybe over here, actually. There we go. There's enough trees in between all of this. We should be good. I think I might actually plop some stores along the main road just over here. Okay, so the last thing I'll do is go back into the Find It tool, and I think I had success by searching Flag, because I made one of these golf courses in my Gasparilla series, and I think it was Sport Park Flag. Yeah, there we go. So that is just a very short flagpole that I can now go ahead and plop at each hole. So this would be on your putting green, and uh, it's basically just letting you know where the hole actually is. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, zoomed out, not even that high. You can't even see these little poles anymore. But, you know, I like to get down to the nitty-gritty details in my builds. And uh, by having these poles here, adds a little bit more detail. Now, I just want to take a second, guys, to beautify this whole neighborhood. I kind of rushed through it in an effort to unlock this uh that golf resort or uh, golf villa i think it was um i just want to take a moment now to maybe fill in this entire neighborhood with some more trees you know just to beautify the whole thing i'm not going to be too picky here i'm going to increase my brush strength and my brush size and uh, we'll just kind of go through this whole neighborhood and plop a whole bunch of trees in between all these empty spaces 
so then we're sure to not miss any spots we can really cram a whole bunch of trees in between all of these spots but there you have it oh yeah that's looking way better look at that just by adding some trees you can add so much life to a otherwise barren area all right, and with those props being placed down, you can't really tell from afar, but you know, when you zoom in right down to the nitty gritty, you can see all of these additional details. So that is going to conclude this episode, guys. I really hope you appreciated it and that you learned a thing or two on how to make a convincing golf course using nothing but very basic mods. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video in particular or if you enjoy my content in general. So that's it for me and I will catch you in the next one. Take care guys.